Hello there and welcome to this A-level biology mind tutorial on depolarization and repolarization in the action potential, which is really just a recap of what we covered in our last tutorial, bringing into context how we go from our resting potential to depolarizing our membrane to then repolarizing it again. So this is a really good recap of what we have learned over the last couple of tutorials on how we generate an action potential. So just have a think first of all, what is required to generate an action potential? So the answer is a stimulus. So let's talk through this graph that we've seen over the last few tutorials. So this here is our resting membrane potential, minus 70 millivolts. Our neuron is very happy at rest, but then it receives a stimulus and we get depolarization up to the threshold, at which point we get more depolarization. And that is our action potential formed and subsequently we, we get repolarization of the membrane. So I'd like to talk through this a lot slower now and just tie in what we've learned over our last few tutorials. So let's imagine this is our neuronal membrane. So this is our membrane here and this structure itself is our neuron. So this is the cytoplasm and this is the extracellular space. So let's just label that. So this is the cytoplasm and this is the extracellular space. Okay, so first of all, we know that our resting membrane potential, let's just elongate this a little bit so I have a little bit more room to play. So our resting membrane potential is generated and maintained by our sodium potassium pump, which is pumping out three sodium ions for every two potassium ions it moves into the cell and this uses ATP. So this is our sodium potassium pump. Okay so three sodiums moving out for every two potassiums being pumped in and this is using energy from ATP. But our membrane is nice and permeable to potassium because potassium channels are open. So this potassium can then just diffuse out of the cell down its electrochemical gradient. Because remember, our potassium ions are building up within our neuron, so they're gonna be at a higher concentration within the neuron. But if the potassium ions are open and the membrane is permeable to potassium, which it is at the resting potential, then potassium is gonna move back out down its concentration gradient and is gonna build up out here. So that means we have the buildup of sodium ions and potassium ions in the extracellular space, which means that the outside of the membrane is lovely and positively charged because all of these positively charged ions are collecting on the outside of the membrane, whereas the inside of the membrane is more negatively charged because firstly the positively charged ions are moving out, but also we've got anions which are negatively charged large molecules within the cytoplasm. So remember, this is what we call the potential difference. It's that difference in charge between the outside of the membrane to the inside of the membrane. And let me give you this tip here. The reason why our resting membrane potential is negative is because, remember, our cytoplasm is negative. So this graph is always referring to the potential inside the neuron and we can see it's negative compared to the outside and we know that the resting membrane potential which is here is minus 70 so that's our resting membrane potential. So this is how our resting membrane potential is maintained but when we get a stimulus what happens? Well when we get a stimulus our sodium ion channels in our membrane open and we get sodium diffusing down its electrochemical gradient into the cytoplasm. So when I say electrochemical gradient it has an electrical gradient because it's being attracted to the negative charge within the neuron, the positively charged sodium ions are being attracted to the negative charge so it's moving down its electrical gradient 
but also it's moving down its concentration gradient because the sodium ions have collected out here so there's a higher concentration of sodium outside the neuron than in so it moves down its concentration gradient into the neuron so sodium at stage number two here sodium moves down its electrochemical gradient into the neuron. Now a really essential step to remember here is when we get our stimulus we get some opening of our sodium channels. Now as sodium channels open our negative charge in within our neuron gets less and less negative because the positive ions are moving in so it's getting a little bit more positive. So it's going to push itself up from minus 70 to around minus 55. If it reaches minus 55, then depolarization occurs. If it doesn't reach minus 55, then it's a failed initiation and depolarization does not occur because not enough sodium channels are open to allow lots of sodium in. So it's really essential we reach that threshold of minus 55 millivolts here. That's our threshold. Because if that threshold is, is reached, many, many more voltage-gated sodium ion channels open and we get more sodium moving in, so more and more ion channels open and more sodium moves in and it causes this depolarization of the cell because it reverses the inside of the membrane, it reverses that charge to a positive and the outside of the membrane is therefore more negative than the inside. And that's why we start to see the potential of the neuron increasing to more positive levels. But if that threshold is not increased, then fewer sodium channels are open and we don't get this huge influx of sodium into the neuron and we get a failed initiation. So that's why stimulus might not always lead to an action potential. It's because the threshold membrane potential was not reached. However, if the threshold potential is reached, which is usually triggered by a larger stimulus, a larger stimulus opens more sodium channels, threshold is reached, and at threshold, more and more voltage-gated channels open, we get a huge influx of sodium into the cell, and our action potential is generated. Now, at about plus 40 millivolts, we get a reversal of the potential. So this is because, let's drop this over here, this is because sodium channels that were open now spontaneously close. So they close because they've been open for a certain amount of time. And potassium channels open. Now let's think about what happens if more potassium channels open. Well, we've now got this positive charge on the inside of our neuron and this negative charge on the outside of our neuron. So potassium is going to move down its electrical gradient out of the neuron. So potassium now moves out of the neuron. Why is that occurring? Now, that's because our potassium is positively charged and it's attracted to the more negative charge on the outside of the membrane that's now happened after this depolarization. Now, note potassium is not moving down its chemical gradient because it's equal in concentration inside and out. Because remember, the potassium ions were diffusing out of the cell and equalizing their concentrations at the beginning and at the stage of resting membrane potential. So potassium is only moving out because potassium channels have now opened and there is an electrical gradient because the membrane across the potential across the membrane has now flipped. So that means at this plus 40 we get sodium channels closing, so no more sodium is moving into the cell. But we get potassium channels opening, potassium moves out, so now that neuron is getting less and less positive because those positive potassium ions are now moving out of the cell, they're being lost from the cell. So that means the potential now starts to fall and we get a reversal from this back to this and we get this fall and more negative membrane potentials being 
reach as the potassium moves out of the neuron. Okay, so we've covered a lot there. I have jotted down lots of notes. This diagram is really, really useful to jot down in your notes as we talked through it. And I'm now going to summarise it for you in writing on the next slide. So first of all, we have a stimulus which triggers an inflow of sodium ions into the cell. And this increases the potential difference from minus 70 millivolts to a less negative value. So it goes from minus 70 millivolts to minus 60 millivolts to minus 55 millivolts, at which point the threshold potential is reached. That minus 55 millivolts is the threshold potential. And at the threshold potential, many voltage-gated sodium ion channels open, and sodium ions rapidly diffuse in down their electrochemical gradient and make the inside of the neuron more and more positive, so the potential difference increases to plus 40 millivolts. Now, sodium channels spontaneously close and voltage-gated potassium channels open around this stage. And potassium ions quickly diffuse out of the axon down their electrical gradient. And because positive ions are being lost from the neuron, the neuron is becoming less positive and more negative. So that repolarizes the membrane. Okay. So we have really broken down everything that we've covered over the last couple of tutorials. In our next tutorial, we're going to move on to look at what happens after this stage. So what happens from here onwards? Well done for following through and I'll see you for the next tutorial.